from the games I play. Most of the times, I expect a well-executed narrative intertwined with the game and art design, not afraid of touching important subjects such as philosophy, human condition, or maybe delivering a social message in its context. Or, a story consists of many interesting characters whose dialogues and behaviors are interesting, engaging, and makes you care about them. Even, even if it tells a simple or an exciting story rather than a deep one with those characters. Well, you might say that there are hundreds of literary classics and very known films are just doing that with their primary motivation being telling a story rather than busying the observer with the need of interaction to proceed through it. Why bother or expect the same from the video games? For example, in no book, no film, you can actually talk with the progenitor of your whole universe, according to Greek mythology, or ascend to godhood from a wimpy nobody, while at the same time experiencing and discovering a world that has been created just for you to explore and get yourself immersed in it. The games can let you experience these. That's why I think they are the ultimate medium for the storytelling and visual arts. So, with that idea of mine in mind, here is my comparative analysis of two games with the occasional references to my gamer motivation profile. Mortal Shell is a game that actually makes me happy just because of its existence, even if I have really mixed opinions on it because of its flaws in level design. It makes me happy because this game is practically a love letter to Dark Souls franchise, which is my favorite video game franchise of all time. That being said, its similarities regarding atmosphere, the cruel nature of it, the core game loop is actually pinpoint and very well taught. I played no other Souls-like game that captures the vibe of the Dark Souls that successfully and that's a big plus on my side. Because I do not have enough time and to be honest I don't think that I have actually understand it fully right now because I am still playing the game, I won't be explaining and analyzing the lore and the story of Mortal Shell, but from what I have experienced and read so far, I can safely say that there are pretty good amount of lore pieces and deep context behind them, which is also a plus considering this is a very Souls-like game and there is no linear script narrative to follow through. Speaking of narrative and atmosphere, I have a score of 93% in subcategory of immersion in my game motivation profile and it is no surprise that I have enjoyed this game in terms of this aspect. I really felt like I am the foundling when I am in-game and the dark grimy mood of the game affected me like the way that developers probably intended. Let's get to the gameplay. You like heavy combat, but I mean like heavy. This game has it. Except from one particular shell, every other one is slow, weighty and sometimes unwieldy for my tastes. But that doesn't mean it is bad. It is just feels awkward from time to time, but to give its credit, every attack feels very impactful as a result of this design. Other than that, it mostly plays very similar to other Souls-like games based around stamina management and avoiding attacks, traps and, you know, trying to kill with a slow, methodical combat play. However, there is one mechanic that causes Mortal Shell to stand out amongst the other games in this genre and it is the hardening mechanic. When you press the left trigger, the founding skill or shell becomes rocky which causes you to tongue one or two hits without getting any damage. You can do this while in mid-swing, mid-walling or just standing. This brings up new possible tactics for the players and it is working pretty well. Other than that, there is also a parry mechanic but because of the game's way to combat it is really hard to pull it off compared to Dark Souls and it feels janky. Once more, I want to refer to my gamer profile. I have a score of 64% in the subcategory of mastery and also in it I have a score of 83% in challenge. I think it really explains on its own why my favorite video game franchise is Dark Souls and why I love Souls-like games like Mortal Shell. It just don't have a cryptic story. Also learning the enemy behaviors and the navigations throughout the levels is a challenge. But I am not talking about the navigation problems that comes with the bad level design of course. Combined with very cruel punishment system, this game is very much to my liking. It gives the challenge I want to me.
pathetic. Just please be careful where you go after you eat all this this time, okay, Serby? I mean, old father's nice to you, at least, isn't he, boy? Do not let him manipulate you, Cerberus. Father, look, Lord Uncle Zeus, I've been in contact with him, and he... My brother Zeus forgives me. Zeus forgives me. How dare that blasted little bra... What did you do? What happened between you? None of your business. Go on now and frolic with that Lord Uncle of yours, the both of them. And don't you ever speak of him to me again. Loud and clear. Hello there. Hades is the best in the game I have ever played in my life, my game of the year for 2020. Hades is a thrilling, innovative and extremely well crafted experience both in terms of game mechanics and the calculations behind them and also the art, story and score. What else can you think of? It's a roguelike game and it tells the story of Prince Zagreus who is trying to escape the underworld in his father Hades' grasp. But here's the thing, the chosen concept for the story and the way it's delivered to the player, it is absolutely genius. Remember that I mentioned from what I expect from a narrative. One of them was interesting characters and dialogues. And this game does that top-notch quality. Every single character is extremely enjoyable to talk. From our adorable three-headed dog servers to primordial beings like Chaos. Not to mention all of the Olympian gods and mind you, they only show themselves when you encounter a boon from them. While playing the game, they are not actually NPCs. Two romanceable characters, but I will not spoil their name. This game has a rich cast of characters with all of them having their own agenda and personality and I mean real personalities, not like regular NPCs you can see in many open world games. Oh. And I mentioned this is a roguelike game and not a game like Last of Us, where the story is in the core of the game, right? It is genius and so well executed. The gameplay. Well, even thinking about it makes me want to go and make another run. It feels amazing. There are immense amount of options and combinations about what can you do to kill your enemies. There are six weapons. All of them are very different than the others in terms of the tactics that they are offering to you and you can grant them unique abilities, for example by finding a Daedalus hammer while during a run. In addition, the boons that the Olympian gods and the chaos grants you, special powers, buffs, effects, which also can enhance your combat experience. See, there are hundreds of combinations and approaches to combat and it works fantastically well. Hades, regarding to my gamer profile, fulfills my expectations from a game perfectly. It has an engaging set of characters to interact with, an original and innovative expression of a story, which ultimately causes a total immersion in the game world. It is also an easy to learn, hard to master game, not just in terms of reflexes, but also in terms of the builds and the determining which set of boons and enhancements will provide the best possible combination for a run. to these heights. Oh, I want a rematch now.
These games are both action games at their cores, but there are many differences between them as you can both tell from my words and the gameplay footages. But I liked those games because of similar reasons, even if it's their executions regarding the things that I am comparing are very different and distinct from one another. They are both immersive games and really captivates the player in their worlds. They are both challenging, even by their very nature, Mortal Shell being a Souls-like and Hades roguelike. But also both games has a similar learning by trying kind of approach with their learning curves. However, their approach to storytelling and artistic visions are totally not alike to each other like those other subjects. They have their own charm on this part. I am very aware that there is much left to discuss and dig into, but for the sake of keeping this video short, I gotta wrap this up, be seeing you in the next one, perhaps.